could we, we could do. we could do it however. But uh, go ahead, just just get on do it real slow, just right All right, well you gotta put the put buddy in your mouth there. Oh, I'm, oh. I'm putting the fake worm yeah, in my mouth. Yeah, this is the real deal. Um, That's what <laughs> it was mid September and I had just come back from a field season working on the coast of Maine and we were working on what we study in the lab, which are the life histories of marine invertebrate animals. And I came back to teach a class on invertebrate biology. And during the course of teaching that class, I began to experience symptoms that I describe as mild of having a rough patch in the surface of my gums. I was actually sort of rooting for it to be something that I would figure out what it was during the course of the semester. My now four-year-old son, at the time he was three, woke up in the middle of the night and had to use the, had to use the bathroom. So he came up, went to the bathroom, and I realized after we'd gotten him back to bed that the worm had moved forward to a place where I, I felt like I could get it out. So I made my wife get up with me um, and we went to the mirror and I had a pair of fine forceps. She held the flashlight. I scraped around the lining of my cheek until I felt like I could both see it and, and get a good grip on the worm. The first time I tried to do it, it slipped out. The second time I tried to do it, it slipped out. I was, and I was trying to do it so it wouldn't break because I wanted to be able to identify it. So the third time I was like, well, it's coming out. And if I break it, I break it, and I, and I pulled on it harder, and it pulled right out. A little after Christmas, I received an email from my friend John. And the email said something like, you know, I have this really cool thing that's just happened to me, and I pulled a worm out of my mouth, and you know, here are some pictures of it, you know, when it was still in there, and in the Petri dish, and, you know, do you want to you wanna help me study this worm? It's super rare, you know, it's only been a... a was going to be the 13th case in the United States, and I was like, sure, it's kind of disgusting, but you know, sign me up, I, I'm excited about it. Yeah, so I came by the lab, we looked at some pictures that he took of the worm, I brought it back to my own lab and sequenced a couple genes that, luckily for us, had already been identified in cattle. Uh, we were able to use that information and verify that John indeed had uh, this infection by C. fulcrum, and we were actually the first um, team to genetically verify that this type of worm could indeed infect humans. We don't know where it, we, where I got it from. We suspect maybe the, the well water that I was drinking at the field station that I work at in Maine. But it's, it, it's at least as likely that I got it by sharing a box of raisins with my son um, because there are insects in your raisins, there are insects in your cereal, there are insects parts in lots of foods that we that we eat. So we actually brought John's little buddy right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of looks like a white thread-like piece. This is a, a, a fully grown, essentially, male specimen of this, of this species. It's, as Aurora said, about two centimeters in length. Um, it's much less than a millimeter in, in thickness. Um, and or it's about a millimeter in thickness, and it's uh, yeah, it, it looks small in a jar, but it looks big when you're pulling it out of your lip. It's alive. <laughs> it's 